So I wanted to first introduce to you the concept of um, Alcatel Lucent Enterprises networking portfolio. I think it's important to understand that the portfolio I'm going to present to you today uh, covers two prime solutions. Uh, one we call unified access and that covers the campus networking environment and that is everything that covers uh, you know the main office of a, of a campus as well as a branch office or a road worker or you know someone who's uh, working from home for instance in a, in a Soho environment and you know all of the components um, listed on the chart there on the left hand side are, are covered by the portfolio on the right hand side uh, the same products also can be put together in such a way to construct a uh, data center top of rack switching solution um, so this is a relatively new area for Alcatel Lucent Enterprise uh, we hit the market pretty hard in 2012 uh, with this, uh, what we call the pod mesh architecture, and it uh, got a lot of accolades. Uh, in fact, it won best of show at Interop in uh, 2012, and we've been seeing a lot of uptake uh, in this particular part of our portfolio or, or this particular application of our portfolio. So, you know, I, like I'm saying, it's, it's the same products in, in both sides of the solution. Uh, you know, this makes us a bit different than some of our competitors who may have one uh, line of products for their campus networking environment and a completely different line of products for the data center switching uh, part of, of the solution. So let's take a quick overview of, you know, what, what uh, is inside each of these, uh, you know, high-level solutions. So on the converged campus side, um, I think you're going to see that we have uh, the full range of, of products, both wired and wireless, to support um, a full-blown modern campus networking solution. So at the, uh, at the edge of the network, we have the unified access, um, so a series of products there, um, you know, from FASD to GIGI and beyond. Um, from a wireless perspective, we have um, access points that connect to controllers, we have access points uh, that are controllerless, uh, same, same access points, different software. And we also have access points that be, can be connected in a, in a remote setting. Uh, so uh, for instance, if, uh, if you're a home office worker, you could have a remote access point, which automatically will tunnel you back into the enterprise's data center so that you can access uh, all of the same uh, data infrastructure and uh, you know, potentially even voice infrastructure if you like um, you know, without any action required on the part of the end user uh, because the tunnel is set up automatically by the remote access point. Um, the whole edge is complemented by a, a core, and we'll be talking about each of these products uh, in a little bit. Um, the core, we have uh, options uh, both for um, chassis-based solutions uh, as well as a, a stackable chassis solution, uh, the OmniSwitch 6900, which we'll be talking about in a bit. Uh, Complementing that are some uh, specialty products for wide area networking. So, um, you know, whether that uh, wide area connectivity is, is Metro Ethernet or DSL or 4G, we have solutions for that. And on the management side, um, you know, we have policy management, we have network infrastructure management, um, as well, uh, you know, sophisticated MPLS uh, service aware management um, if you were doing a wide area networking as well. So that's the converged campus side of it in a nutshell. And then um, the slide here is for data center switching. And you'll notice that um, the same products that I showed um, previously are showing up again on this slide, the same products. Um, the pod and mesh architecture is uh, built by the Omni switches uh, 6900 and 6860 and can be aggregated by our chassis based uh, Omni switch 10K solution in the core. Um, I, I think what's important to note here is that, um, you know, we have a very open solution working with a number of uh, different SDN controllers, uh, data center hypervisors, and so forth. Um, you know, we just added uh, lately uh, fiber channel support to uh, the portfolio. So, you know, we're starting to see the convergence of storage uh, and uh, uh, compute, um, you know, being delivered on the same platforms. The management side here is quite important uh, because it, it is virtual machine aware, and this allows you to do things like um, automate the movement of virtual machines in your data center, uh, allowing the virtual machine to uh, adapt uh, its network configuration as it moves from port to port within your data center. 
So that's you know a, a very high level overview of of the uh, of the portfolio. And you know I, I'm here to talk to you today that to tell you that you know Alcatel Lucent Enterprises has, has been in the business of of networking since 2008. Um, you know we've been working very very hard at um, enhancements to the portfolio. And you know some of these uh, you know recent releases are, are starting to be recognized by the analyst community as well. Uh, I'm showing you here um, a couple of charts uh, from some leading analysts: uh, Gartner on the left, uh, Current Analysis on the right. Uh, Gartner's latest um, wired and wireless LAN mod J quadrant put Alcatel Lucent Enterprise in the visionaries category. Um, if you take a look at the, the competitors here. Uh, the only other full-service vendor, meaning uh, a vendor who provides uh, wired, wireless, and voice solutions, is Cisco. Um, so, you know, from a from a positioning uh, aspect, um, you know, we recognize that uh, you know we we have uh, we have a lot to offer to the market, and uh, you know, Gartner seeing that as well. Current Analysis uh, recently released their assessment of the Alcatel Lucent uh, OmniSwitch family. Uh, gave us a rating of uh, a very strong, as you can see overall, uh, which is a couple of levels uh, above the uh, the product class average. Um, so Current Analysis uh, recognizes the uh, the recent uh, work we've done to augment our portfolio and to deliver the kinds of solutions our customers are looking for. Um, Let's now drill down into each one of the, the main uh, products uh, within the portfolio, just to give you a quick overview. I'm going to start uh, at the core of the network with our, our Layer 3 um, offerings. And, uh, again, this is uh, intended to be a brief overview to introduce you. And, you know, of course, there's tons more detail available um, on the website that I'll provide to you at the end. Um, so starting from um, the chassis uh, families, um, so we, we do have two chassis offerings. Uh, one is the OmniSwitch 9000 E series, and then uh, previously mentioned is the OmniSwitch 10K. So the main differences between these two, um, the 9000 E has PoE support, so that uh, puts it into the category where it can be um, not only in the core, but it can also provide services to the edge. Um, this has a 768 gigabit per second backplane and uh, has up to 10 gigabit per second line cards. The 10K, on the other hand, um, you know, doesn't have PoE support. Uh, it's intended as a, uh, as, a, as a pure core switch um, with 40 gig line cards, uh, over 5 terabits of uh, capacity. Um, all the ports are at line rate. And the 10K is really the, the core of the aggregation of uh, the top of rack um, solution that we make in the data center. Um, so by combining 6900s together in a mesh, uh, the 10K can uh, provide you with an environment where you get uh, very low latency um, between uh, you know ports in your data center. So that's at the core, um, you know, where we've got um, you know a, a bunch of products. Um, I think I see a question here. Let's see if I can. Uh, I can address here, uh, saying that there's echo here. Um, I'm not sure what I can do to address that. Hopefully, it's uh, it's not a problem for everybody. All right, so uh, moving on from uh, the core switching components. Um, so the the 10K and the and the uh, the 9800 are both chassis based solutions. The OmniSwitch 6900 is a um, is a compact core that uh, you know I call on this slide. It's it's been a runaway hit for uh, Alcatel Lucent Enterprise. Um, it's very very versatile. So it is a stackable switch uh, with 10 gig E ports um, and uh, 40 gig uplinks. So this allows it to be used um, as a as a small core switch. Um, it can be um, stacked in a way uh, using virtual chassis technology, and, and I'll talk about that a little bit. It's also the um, heart and soul of our data center switching solution um, because it, it's a very, very uh, performant uh, top of rack switch, um, you know, with uh, you know shortest path bridging support, which is very critical in the data center. Uh, it has fiber channel support as well. Um, you know, this this switch was introduced to the market as a top of rack switch, and um, as you'll see in a bit. Um, this has been a really, really good alternative um, in the core uh, for our customers, um, you know, looking to, to build a, a solution that's, uh, that's very resilient, 
uh, very performant and uh, very cost effective, um, you know, in the core. So that's the 6900. Um, moving uh, moving down uh, the chain in terms of uh, capacity, uh, we have uh, the 6850E. Um, this switch uh, has been uh, the workhorse of the portfolio for a number of years now. Um, it's used as an intelligent edge. Uh, it can be used as a small core or a small top of rack switch. Um, it's got uh, PoE support. Um, it has all the layer three protocols you need. Um, it can be used uh, with licensing as a as a Metro Ethernet CPE. Um, so you know, very very versatile switch. And uh, you know, over the years we've sold uh, many many of them. I only mention this product for completeness. Some of you you know may have encountered it in the past or, or be familiar with it yourselves. Um, but you know what um, what we actually are starting to position instead of the 6850 is a new product that was launched in May 2014 um, called the 6860. And, um, you know, this has um, everything the 6850E does and, and a little bit more, um, you know, with respect to, um, you know, its support for OpenFlow, for instance, uh, you know, something that we didn't have in the past. And I think this is a new enough switch and an interesting enough switch that I, I should spend a little bit more time on it. So. Um, with that, let's uh, let's delve into you know why we call the 6860 the industry's most advanced access switch. Um, I, I think one thing um, that's important to realize about the 6860 is that it has on board uh, an ASIC, which has been put into place to do wire rate application enforcement. So um, the ASIC can actually um, you know use signatures uh, and heuristics to actually identify. Um, applications, uh, not only identify them, but also, um, you know, provide policy enforcement. So if you want to treat, um, you know, YouTube differently from Facebook, if you want to, um, you know, take take BitTorrent and, um, you know, dial down the bandwidth allocated to that particular application or, or completely black hole it, um, that's all possible, all at wire rate. And that's for up to 100 different applications on a per switch basis. Um, as I mentioned, it, it also has OpenFlow, um, and uh, it has support um, across all 48 ports uh, for PoE Plus. Uh, PoE Plus uh, increasingly being used um, in networks, uh, not only for uh, wireless access points. Uh, 802.11ac uh, is looking uh, for PoE Plus typically. Uh, but more and more, we see IP connected devices, uh, especially cameras, beginning to need the uh, you know the kind of um, electrical power uh, provided by PoE Plus. So um, that's the 6860. But there's also the 6860E, and the 6860E is like the 6860, um, except for a couple of very important differences. Uh, first of all, it adds a second uh, processor on the uh, on the switch. And this processor is used to do application collection. So if you want visibility of what's going on at the edge of your network, uh, the coprocessor will be able to identify those applications and report on them for you. There's no enforcement in the coprocessor. It's, it's merely for um, observing what's going on to give you that, that, uh, that intelligence about what's, what's running on your network. The idea being that you could use a 6860E to identify the, the top applications, uh, desired or, or undesired, and then turn around and uh, load those application signatures into the ASIC, where you can then do traffic, um, you know, enforcement uh, on those particular applications, the top hundred. Um, another important difference with the 6860E is the um, availability of um, four ports that can deliver up to 60 watts of power. Um, these, uh, this kind of power uh, is sometimes needed for uh, things like uh, small cell technology, um, high def uh, video cameras, and, and so forth. And uh, you know the flexibility that this uh, provides, uh, you know, I think is, is going to be well appreciated in the market. Um, so I, I think those are the, the key points of the 6860 and 6860E. Uh, we're really excited about it. It's uh, our most recent release. And uh, you know is is now starting to uh, show up in more and more customers, um, you know, as we go along. Um, 
on a couple of the charts, um, you, would, uh, you will have noticed uh, the concept of virtual chassis. And virtual chassis is, is one of the main reasons um, our switches like the 6900 and the 6860 um, can be used um, to replace a traditional chassis-based environment. So, you know, to put it simply, the idea of virtual chassis is to take these individual stackable switches, um, connect them together over dedicated links, and treat them as a single IP address, a single routing entity. Um, in this way, you can, uh, you know, grow your network um, quite easily and flexibly, um, and you can, um, you know, provide an alternative to the, the chassis-based environment at a, at a fraction of the cost. Um, and you don't sacrifice anything in terms of, you know, redundancy or resiliency, because with, with virtual chassis, um, you know, you, you have um, the ability to do things like in-service software upgrades, where you can actually individually upgrade um, uh, every switch uh, in the stack uh, one at a time, and thereby minimize the downtime encountered uh, by any particular user. Um, in the attachments that I've uh, included in this presentation, uh, you'll see uh, that I've included a paper on virtual chassis and on um, in-service software upgrade, um, so you can understand more about how virtual chassis um, can benefit a network deployment, simplify it, and collapse it um, so that you no longer have a need for a three-tier network, uh, you can move to a two-tier network. Speaking of that kind of network, um, let's um, talk a little bit about California State University. Um, so California State University was a major win and a very public win for Alcatel-Lucent Enterprise. Uh, you can Google, uh, you know, Alcatel-Lucent or Alcatel-CSU and, and you'll come up with this story in your top hits. I think the reason is is, is that it um, was a real um, wake-up call uh, in terms of, you know, that there are now alternatives to the traditional Cisco, um, you know, Nexus and Catalyst three-tier um, architecture. Um, you know, in this particular um, opportunity, um, you'll see that, that Alcatel-Lucent uh, ended up being uh, $100 million uh, cheaper, and, and Network World wrote a series of articles to explore why that was. Um, you know, one of the main reasons was that we, um, you know, introduced uh, the 6900 as a compact core at CSU. We leveraged virtual chassis technology. Um, another thing that helped us win the day at CSU was the fact that, um, you know, a number of our switches, as I mentioned previously, can be deployed both in a campus environment or in a data center switching environment. CSU has the need for both. And, you know, as they were rolling out their very large, um, you know, 18 campuses, I think, is the, is the full count, um, you know, they would sometimes uh, be in a situation where, you know, they would have a switch that, um, you know, from their project plan wasn't quite ready to be deployed in a network and a campus environment. And so, you know, they, they needed capacity in their data center, and so they simply redeployed the switch for use in the, in the data center. Um, you know, this was a really important attribute for, for a customer, uh, you know, with the size and complexity of, uh, of a CSU. Um, another anecdotal story I can tell you here is that, you know, we're hearing from CSU that, you know, as a result of their, um, you know, collapsed architecture, they're now using a lot less power than they used to. And, uh, you know, that's an additional, uh, you know, cost savings that, that they didn't anticipate. Um, previously. Uh, I'll point out that CSU was a, a Cisco shop, uh, you know, before turning towards uh, Alcatel-Lucent uh, Enterprise Solutions. Um, you know, another important attribute that I'll, I'll touch on here is um, the concept of auto fabric that is supported by our 6900, 6860, and, and 10K. Um, and, and these are um, an attempt to make um, network provisioning and network turnup uh, much faster, much less prone to error, and uh, much simpler for, for IT uh, staff. Um, so, you know, the, the, the critical attributes of our zero touch are, are shown here, but essentially when you take a, a switch out of the box and you cable it up, um, you know, it's able to do uh, quite a bit of auto discovery and self-provisioning 
you know, based on, you know, whether it's in a, uh, it'll find its OSPF neighbors. Uh, it will um, download a remote configuration that is, uh, you know, stored at a given site, uh, which will speed up provisioning and, and reduce errors. Um, you know, it will, you know, propagate VLANs, uh, you know, over MVRP and, and so on. There lots of different attributes of Autofabric, and this is a continued um, area of development for Alcatel Lucent Enterprise to, to make the network uh, ever more um, simple, uh, ever more um, easy for IT staff to, to provision so that you, you can truly get to a, a plug-and-play um, kind of environment. Um, the 6855 uh, rounds out our Layer 3 um, switch family. Um, the 6855 is a specialty switch which is um, hardened for harsh environments. Uh, we use it uh, a lot in um, electrical utilities, are, are finding it um, useful, um, you know, as they build out their smart grids and, and need um, Ethernet and IP in places they, they didn't think they needed before. Um, transportation networks, uh, you know, both rail, um, subway, uh, highway, are all places, um, you know, where you'll find uh, the, the 6855. Um, it also has, um, you know, uh, Metro E features, um, which, uh, you know, make it suitable for, for use as a CPE. Um, so, so that's the 6855 would be of interest to you if, if you had, um, you know, customers in, in these particular vertical segments. Uh, another place I've seen these used is at the top of an elevator shaft um, to provide Wi-Fi inside of an elevator. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a harsh environment, too. It's, it's very hot and um, air-conditioned uh, inside an elevator shaft. Okay, so that's uh, our Layer 3 uh, LAN switches. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about our, our Layer 2 LAN switches now. Um, so I, I think the, the, the switch we've probably sold most of, uh, you know, by volume is the OmniSwitch 6450. Um, comes in 24 and 48 port uh, variants, uh, PoE or not PoE. Um, this is your stackable, um, you know, giggy um, access switch. And, you know, what, what's interesting about it, and I've highlighted this in red, um, the 6450 has a variant where the, the, um, the access ports are fast E, and with a software license upgrade, you can transform them to giggy. Now, you know, let's be honest, not many enterprises anymore are looking for a fast E switch, um, but, you know, this, this feature, this ability to deploy a switch you know, which, which probably meets your needs today, you know, at Fasty and gives you a migration strategy with a software license upgrade to get to Giggy um, is very attractive to certain kinds of customers. And as far as I know, um, you know, we're the only vendor that, that has that kind of feature in the portfolio, the ability to do a software upgrade from Fasty to Giggy and on the uplink side from Giggy to, to 10 Giggy. So, you know, that's often a, a very interesting, um, you know, consideration uh, for a customer. Uh, again, 6450 has been deployed as a Metro E CPE. Um, again, that's, uh, that's a license, um, an additional license that, that you have to get to, to enable those features. So that's the 6450. Uh, and then the 6450, uh, I treat this kind of separately. Uh, the Model 10 um, is, again, um, comes in two variants, one with a simply fast E, which is software upgradable to Giggy, um, or just straight Giggy, that's, that's also available. Where this one gets deployed a lot is in classrooms. Um, you know, all of you who, who sell into the education market, the K through 12 education market in particular, uh, you know, know that the classroom has, be, has become a, a very um, digital place, uh, lots of use of, uh, of IP technologies uh, for all kinds of, of reasons. And, um, you know, having a switch that can uh, deliver the, uh, the needed, um, you know, Ethernet uh, ports without having a lot of noise in the classroom uh, is often seen as a tremendous benefit inside uh, that kind of environment. So otherwise uh, identical and, uh, uh, to the other 6450 models I was showing you, but, uh, you know, if you need a quiet um, gig E switch, uh, the 6450 is uh, certainly um, a front runner for that. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll touch on quickly. We also have a, a fast E only um, switch, the the Omni Switch 6250. 
Um, you know, it has, um, you know, a lot of the same features as the 6450, just not the, not the speeds and not the throughput. Um, you know, we see less and less demand for, for switches like this, but it, it does round out the portfolio. And every once in a while, you, you do get a requirement for, for this kind of, uh, of uh, lower speed access switch. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, rounding out the portfolio, we have a number of, you know, wide area um, routers, uh, you know, suitable for um, small branch office and, and medium to large branch offices. Um, you know, so the, the small branch office ones, uh, the Omni Access 5700 series, um, you know, these have the kinds of interfaces you would find in a small office. Um, so, you know, if you want LTE connectivity, if you want, um, you know, DSL connectivity, that's, uh, that's the kind of platform you're looking at. Um, what's interesting is about the 5800 series here in the middle um, is that it, um, it has, it provides support for our Omni PCX line of voice products, uh, as well as being able to, um, you know, deliver uh, voice services to, uh, to a Cisco environment. So, um, you know, in the event of a loss of the WAN interface, the Omni Access 5800 has sufficient uh, features um, to be able to provide some degree of, of voice survivability as well. Um, so, so that's kind of a, an interesting, um, you know, feature of, of that uh, particular product portfolio. And then um, on the right-hand side here, we have a couple um, of ruggedized um, switches uh, with some very specialized features. Uh, for instance, the uh, OmniSwitch 5725A here on the bottom of the right-hand side um, is, a, is actually designed for deployment in vehicles, um, so buses, uh, trains, and so forth. And, um, you know, it has embedded GPS technology. It's uh, vibration resistant. You can use it to, um, you know, it, it, it also has a 4G interface um, so that you can have network connectivity while you're on the move. Um, and, you know, if any of you seen the, the, um, the connected bus solution that, uh, that we launched lately, uh, the 5725A is, uh, is, is, you know, at the center of that particular solution. So that kind of rounds out the, the portfolio uh, in terms of, um, you know, the, the various uh, environments that you need Ethernet connectivity in. Um, all of this, of course, is supported by uh, our OmniVista 2500 network management system. Um, this is actually two products, depending on, you know, where you're deploying it. Um, you know, in a, in a campus LAN environment, um, it, of course, has all of the um, capabilities you would expect it to have. And we're augmenting the platform as well to support the application analytics I talked about earlier with the 6860. Um, the 6860 provides, you know, the, the brains or the, um, or the muscle, I suppose, for identifying applications. And the OmniVista 2500 will provide the, the, um, the summary and the aggregation of that data into usable and actionable, um, you know, charts and graphs and, and data. The other aspect of the OmniVista 2500 is um, it has um, you know, modules for supporting specifically a data center environment. Uh, and, you know, here is where virtual machine mobility lives. And, and virtual machine mobility, um, you know, is an important uh, attribute when you are dealing in, um, you know, a data center environment where virtual machines will, will uh, move from port to port, um, server to server inside a data center. What the virtual machine manager does, it actually has hooks into the hypervisors and is able to see these machines moving and adapt the network profile of that application accordingly. So, um, you know, you, you don't end up with the finger pointing between the, um, you know, the server team and the networking team uh, in a data center environment. Uh, the OmniVista 2500, you know, helps automate some of that uh, virtual machine movement and uh, is able to, you know, help, help troubleshoot when, when things do go wrong. Um, I thought it would be useful uh, on this call to talk a little bit about some of, um, you know, some of our key, um, you know, technology differentiators uh, as it pertains to uh, the LAN portfolio. Um, one, of the, one of the ones that we've been using and, and continue to augment over the years is, is what we call the, the user network profile. 
and the user network profile is something that shows up in all of our products. It's included, um, you know, no additional licensing required. Um, what a user profile does is it, it provides a, um, you know, a series of attributes, uh, you know, pertaining to what VLAN a user can access, what kind of bandwidth capabilities they have, what kind of quality of service capabilities, and, and what kind of, um, you know, application access they're allowed to have. We call it a user network profile because it, it actually follows the user uh, and not a port and not a device. Um, so as the user moves uh, within the building from area to area, from Ethernet port to Ethernet port, from wired device to wireless device, we can apply the same kinds of network uh, you know, policies and provisioning to that user no matter where they are. Um, from a networking, or sorry, from an end user perspective, you know, this provides them with the, with the user experience they're expecting. And from an IT perspective, it simplifies things considerably because you can apply the same policies and the same rules um, to everybody, regardless of whether they're connecting um, over the wired network uh, or the wireless network. So that's really important as mobility becomes more and more prevalent. Uh, related to that is a feature we call uh, VDI fluency. Um, for those of you who don't know, VDI is a Citrix technology which is used to essentially deliver a desktop-like experience to an end-user device uh, without having any um, a need for all of those applications and all of that software to be installed on that device. So the applications are actually hosted and rendered in a server farm and then delivered um, over a VDI tunnel to the end device. Um, you know, it's actually quite popular in verticals like healthcare where, you know, you don't want to provide um, a lot of applications on a lot of devices. It's much simpler to simply uh, deliver the applications from the cloud and uh, when the device leaves the environment, the, uh, the environment disappears too. So it, it's uh, inherently uh, you know, rather secure that way. The problem with VDI is that the application is, is, um, can be, to some network elements, a, a monolith. It's a single protocol. And if you're delivering multiple applications inside that VDI tunnel, which is the standard thing to do, um, you know, email, uh, ERP, uh, SIP applications, you know, all of these things are in that, inside that VDI tunnel. And so if there's no visibility inside that tunnel, um, you don't get a very um, usable or useful end user experience. So with VDI fluency, um, you know, we're able to actually look inside the uh, VDI tunnel and pull out the individual applications inside that tunnel and, uh, you know, to the benefit of you know, delivering um, differentiated quality of service depending on the application inside the VDI tunnel. So, again, from an end user perspective, a much better experience. From an IT perspective, a uh, much simpler kind of operation um, so that you can, you know, configure that, that behavior um, across your, your wired and, and wireless network. Um, SIP fluency is another um, you know, standard feature of our switches, um, and the idea here is, um, you know, more and more applications are, are using SIP as a means to set up sessions, um, but, but they're not all treated equally. Um, you know, voice has different, um, you know, delay characteristics than, than say, video. Um, you know, SIP data sharing is, is another thing. And, you know, what we are able to do as a standard feature in our switches is to look inside the, these various SIP flows and, and treat them differently and, you know, also provide the, um, the dashboarding at our OmniVista level so you can actually see, you know, how each of those individual applications is performing. You know, some of them may be desirable and some of them maybe not. Another, um, you know, interesting capability uh, of our solution, and, and this speaks to um, our longtime relationship uh, with, uh, with Aruba, um, is the ability to, um, you know, provide support for, um, you know, DLNA devices over, um, you know, the, the, the wired or wireless network. The, the problem with DLNA devices like Apple TVs is that they, these are consumer devices and um, 
their standard behavior and their default behavior and the only behavior they know out of the box is to broadcast their presence to their own subnet. And that works great in a home environment, but in a business environment or, you know, a school environment, that's not really desirable. You're going to need access to those devices beyond just the subnet that it happens to occupy. And um, you want to be able to tunnel that uh, multicast DNS um, announcement to multiple subnets. And, and that is something that, that our switches are able to do, um, you know, thanks to, to the long-term partnership we've had with Aruba. Um, so what we're showing in this particular chart is, you know, you have, um, you know, maybe an Apple TV in the dorm and uh, a Bonjour printer in the library and another Apple TV in the engineering building. And, you know, using user network profiles now, you can differentiate the access rights, uh, you know, of each of those devices depending on, you know, who the person is and, and where the person is. Um, so, you know, a professor would want to be able to use the printer in the library as well as broadcast content from their device to the Apple TV in the engineering lecture hall. Um, the last thing you want to do is provide that same access to a student um, because otherwise you'd have very predictable and, uh, and no doubt rowdy results. Um, for a student, uh, they'll want to be able to access the printer in the library, of course, but, you know, completely block them from accessing the engineering building's Apple TV. But, you know, their dorm uh, is perfectly legitimate and reasonable to allow them access to that particular device. So, you know, we're the first, uh, first and only vendor to this point to support these air group features on both the wired and, and wireless LAN. So, um, if you deal in the education market in particular, I, I think that's an important attribute to consider. So, you know, let's uh, let's close uh, on a couple of summaries here. Um, you know, why why end users first of all choose Alcatel Lucent uh, Enterprise? Uh, I think it comes down to, to four main attributes. Um, you know, standards are are, are crucial um, to our uh, DNA. Uh, we're fanatical about standards. Um, you know, we we. We do and must play well with others, whether that means um, Alcatel Lucent Edge and somebody else's core, um, Alcatel Lucent Wired and, and somebody else's wireless, uh, Alcatel Lucent Wired and Wireless, someone else's voice. Uh, this is something we deal with um, on a daily basis and, you know, many, many references that, um, you know, we, we work well in a multi-vendor environment. Um, you know, the, the security built into our products with features like the user network profile, for instance, um, I think are very important to, to end users as well. Um, you know, we've had a, a very good reputation, uh, you know, in terms of power consumption. Um, you know, we, we adhere to all the standards and, you know, the way we treat um, idle ports, um, I think, is, is different than, than many other vendors, uh, you know, in terms of, the, uh, you know, we provide the, the lowest possible power to a port that is showing uh, inactive so that if a, a port's not in use, it's, it's consuming as little power as possible, just enough to detect a, a new link up um, kind of event. And, you know, the, the, the elements and the architectures we're able to construct with Alcatel Lucent Enterprise Data Gear, um, you know, are, are very resilient and highly available. Um, you know, we, we use these products in, in very, um, you know, mission critical environments where downtime uh, is not acceptable, um, you know, in, in hospital environments, in, in major campus environments, um, you know, we have the, the products and we have the features and the, um, you know, the, the, the building blocks to put these together in such a way to build uh, very highly available uh, networks. Um, why do partners choose Alcatel Lucent? Uh, I think, um, you know, increased margins is, uh, has been the feedback of, of many of our partners. Um, you know, you're not dealing in an environment where there's channel saturation and, and the only thing you get to compete on is, uh, is the price of, of your solution. Um, our, our offer is quite differentiated. Um, you know, it meets 100% of the needs, but, you know, we do things in a different way sometimes. Um, in a standards-based way, uh, in an open way that, that provides, um, you know, your customers with options. Um, and I, I think, you know, being able to show something that, that you're able to meet their needs in a different way than, than all the other guys uh, is an opportunity for, for you to, uh, you know, show, show your stuff in, in the environment. The interoperability, of course, is a given, really. 
Um, you know, we need to be able to work well uh, with others, and it allows, you know, you to position Alcatel Lucent Enterprise in, you know, whatever um, situation you find yourself in without needing to forklift an entire network. Um, you know, you want to you want to evolve a core that's that's gone end of sale, uh, you can do that and you can start there. Um, you want to deploy, um, you know, an edge network refresh and, uh, you know, without without touching the core and without touching the wireless infrastructure, uh, you know, been there and, and done that. So it, it provides you a lot of different options. Um, I, I thought I'd end uh, the presentation with a couple of uh, notes about some uh, initiatives we've got going on uh, for, for the benefit of our partners. Um, we have a program running right now called Enhance the Edge. And, uh, you know, the idea, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, you know, you buy, um, you know, the 6850, the 6450, or the 6900. Um, and, uh, you know, you buy two, you get one free on the 6850 side. Buy three get one free on the 6900 and 6450 side. Very, very simple and straightforward offer. Um, allows you to, to get your feet wet with uh, Alcatel Lucent Enterprise Solutions and, uh, you know, allows you to, um, you know, to, uh, you know, experience the, the, uh, the evolved edge of, of an Alcatel Lucent infrastructure. And I've included there a couple of links, uh, you know, for end users to understand what the program's all about. Um, as well as for registered uh, business partners, that um, that link there is actually hosted on Alcatel Lucent Enterprises Business Partner Portal. Um, it, by coincidence, um, today is the first day of a brand new virtual event that we have running um, for, uh, and the topic is unified access. So, if you want to learn about the latest uh, developments in our um, wired and wireless uh, access infrastructure. Um, there's lots of um, on-demand presentations to watch, um, easily consumable in, you know, five or ten minute increments. Um, those presentations are, are, are live and will be live all week long. Uh, and there's a live Q&A on the 10th of September uh, where uh, registered partners have an opportunity to, uh, to win if they've been paying attention to uh, the presentations we've, we've got there. Uh, a registration link is available here. Uh, it's also in the attachment section. 